All right, well, hey, welcome to lecture number two for this week. Um, what we're going to do in this lecture is get started on chapter six. And uh, chapter six is on flow modeling, making models of, of gas flow and liquid flow. And it's really a huge area out there in mechanical engineering. Um, there are so many flows that need to be modeled, and people with expertise in modeling flows work all over the place. There are people who do CFD, computational fluid, fluid dynamics in Hollywood, to try to make computer generated flows that look very, really realistic. Um, up here in Sacramento, a lot of the work is done in places like uh, water resources or air resources. So there are flow modeling experts there. Um, for those of you who are looking for jobs, don't ignore some place like the Air Resources Board. I've known some people that have worked there and found that pretty interesting. An example of a flow that they would want to try to model would be a plume. So if we take a look up there, you can see a plume. This is just a chimney where we've got a wood burning stove and there's a plume coming out. And um, it turns out that for our neighborhood, there's really no need to model that flow. But on the other hand, for a power plant, there is a strong need to model that flow. And it'll be interesting over the course of your life to see whether we change to local power, pl power plants. So like in this neighborhood here, maybe an area of like about 16 square blocks or something like that, we might have our own power plant and there might be a, a tower with a plume coming out and how do we go about modeling that flow? So um, taking a look at that, if you had a power plant and you've got some sort of exhaust flow coming out, there are several questions we'd like to be an answer when we model. And we're going to start with two of the basic questions. First of all, for this flow coming out, is there volumetric dilution? So that means if you take any little fluid particle that I'm trying to draw down like that, as it moves, is it going to compress or is it going to spread out? And that would be volumetric dilution. So I'm going to ask you guys to first answer yes or no. Yes, there is dilution. No, there isn't. And secondly, give a rate. And the other thing we want to ask, is there any curling going on? Is it just straight flow, or do we have some sort of rotation essentially about an axis going on? And if you're trying to model some sort of fluid flow, those are great questions to start with. Volumetric dilution and curling. So let's go inside and go to the whiteboard and see if we can start figuring that out. All right, so is there dilution? Is there a dilution? We've got some sort of fluid flow, and is there dilution? So a little bit of pictorial stuff on that. Not sure you need to copy this down, but I'm going to give you a basic equation that you definitely want to copy down. So basically, um, if we had some sort of fluid flowing, we might represent it with streamlines. Okay. In a case like this, where if you saw streamlines like this, and you were asked, is there dilution? Hopefully you would say yes. You see these streamlines spreading out, and that means the fluid is spreading out. So its density is changing. Um, and we would say there's dilution. Okay, how much dilution? How are we going to come up with a number for that? Okay, well, um, basically we're doing a volumetric di dilution rate, okay, and we could say it's increasing in volume by a certain number of meters cubed per second, but we normalize that, so we do that per meter cubed. So we would say something like, hey, the volume of this bit of fluid that's moving and spreading out is increasing, say, by two meters cubed per second per every meter cubed of fluid. And so we're gonna get units of one over seconds. So dilution rate is gonna be per second. It's meters cubed per second per meter cubed of fluid. Okay, what physically does that look like? So basically look, what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to, given some math, come up with what the dilution rate is, and then eventually, or better yet, given some sort of flow, come up with math that actually represents what the dilution rate is like. All right, we're gonna start, we're gonna give you the math and ask you to figure out the dilution rate. One more thing before we're getting going. What's dilution, dilution actually gonna look like? So these pictures are in the, uh, similar pictures are in the book. Again, don't need to, you to copy it down. But what I want you to do is we're gonna start with a velocity vector, all right? And I will, we will do this example in a minute, but I'll just get that up there to get going. Okay, so let's imagine that we have some fluid that has that flow, okay? Its velocity vector is four times I hat plus three times J hat. Sorry about that three, I'll try to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, well, as you'll notice in the book, we start with a small fluid particle in the plane that particle might be a little square, okay? Um, in the, in the x, y, z axis, 
coordinate system, it might be a little cube, all right? And we're gonna imagine it's gonna move, all right? So let's just say it moves over here like this. If, there is, if there's no dilution, it would have exactly the same size, same size and same shape. So it hasn't diluted at all. It's meters cubed here and here are actually the same. Okay, what if instead it diluted in the x-direction? So that would mean that maybe this side right over here moved further, and it would move further out here like this, and that would mean that that square is spread out in the x-direction. And you can see what's, what's got to be going on is um, u represents flow in the x-direction, and there's got to be some change in u which allows this side to move faster than that side, and therefore we get dilution. Okay, what would dilution in the y direction look like if this moved over here like this? Well, in that case, then it would actually dilute here like this, and it would have spread out, and that would represent dilution in the y direction. Okay, so good enough. Wait, um, one thing we're going to ask you to do is essentially review a little bit of chapter four and see if we can put it all together and answer those two questions. Is there dilution and rotation? Let's start with dilution and we'll do two examples. So here's your marching orders. Go ahead and copy down this vector. V equals four I hat plus three J, J hat. And the first thing I want you to do is figure out the streamline through zero, zero. Figure out the streamline through zero, zero. We get to test three. That's gonna be money in the bank. You're gonna do it like that. I'm going to be doing it on the board. Why don't you pause the video and figure out the streamline. Okay, so hopefully you work this out. Um, honestly, uh, some great work on test one on the stream on the flow problem. Uh, some so so work on test one. Um, but you should remember that dy dx is always v over u, so that's three fourths. And that one we can just integrate in our head. We know that we get y equals three fourths x plus c. In the case that it's going through zero, zero, then we should have gotten y is equal to three fourths x. So there's our streamline equation, and that allows us what this, this fluid is to get a sense of what this fluid is doing. It's actually moving this way at a slight angle. It's going over four and up three, and I could draw a bunch of streamlines going like that. And you can see that from the velocity vector. That says everywhere, every single point in this field, the velocity, if I go to this point right here, the velocity is over four and up three. So the velocity vector is here like this, okay? And so it's moving over there, over there like that. So that, that fluid is moving here, it's moving that way. If it was here, it was moving that way. If it was here, it was moving that way. I have almost like a river flowing this way like that in an angle. Okay, so hey, is, that, is there gonna be dilution given that that is the flow? Okay, so why don't you let me um, go ahead and erase uh, the y, x and y axis, um, you have that visualization, and let me give you the, equ the equation for whether it's dilution or not, okay? So I'll get it up there in just a second. And this equation you should write down. There's our dilution rate equation. You might want to write that. First of all, write this equation down. This in the symbol for vector calculus is gradient, and gradient is kind of like spreading out. I'm, that's not very precise, but that's, that's pretty good. The spreading out of the velocity, and we do du dx, we do dv dy, and dwz, and then we add them all up. And that's going to give us the dilution rate. If this, thing, if this sum here turns out to be zero, we're going to get no dilution. We're going to get no dilution. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and for this velocity vector, work out the dilution rate. And I encourage you to do the same. And we'll compare answers in just a second.
Okay, I got no dilution. Hopefully you guys got the same, no dilution at all. Let's take a look at the math and see how it turned out. Okay, so to get the dilution rate, I need to take the derivative of the u component, the x component of the velocity, the derivative of the v component of the velocity, and the derivative of the w component of the velocity, okay, or the, the z component of the velocity. And all these are scalars, we're in ME120, so we're probably going to stay away from this for the most part. So we just need to do these two derivatives and add them. So what is U for this function? U for this function is 4. U for this function is 4. What's the root of the 4? 0. Okay, what about um, V? V for this function is 3. At what rate is it changing with Y? It's 0. So the gradient of V is 0. Okay, and then if you think about what that field looked like, basically we had streamlines like this all parallel, no spreading apart, no coming closer together, and as a consequence, we get no dilution, no dilution at all. All right, so there's your first basic equation for chapter six, um, and uh, what we're gonna do a lot is we're gonna give you a velocity vector and say, hey, can you solve that? So I just wanna do one more quick practice on that, and uh, let me get the problem up there and I'll give you your marching orders verbally, and then you'll get going on it. So I'm gonna give you a velocity vector. Okay, there we go. So, uh, actually, I'm gonna to try to get the point that you're gonna work with, all right? All right. Some things you can do if you wanted to fool around with this velocity vector yourself, you could try to draw a bunch of velocity vectors. To draw an xy plane and draw a bunch of velocity vectors to get a feel for what the flow is like. That would be a great thing to do. We might do it later on. Okay? What I want you to do is just to get warmed up, figure out the streamline through 1, 3, x equals 1, y, and y equals 3, okay? And then figure out what is the dilution rate. Is this flow, is there no spreading out, or is this flow spreading out, or is this flow compressing? And we'll, and we'll see how that works out. So, I encourage you to pause the video as long as it takes you to work out the streamline for that, and I will show work in steps so you can make, if you need help, you can make progress. All right, there's your first step. If you're figuring out the streamline, our dy dx is um, equal to v over u. So I have v over u. All right, hopefully this looks somewhat familiar. This was a problem on test one, and we had the full range from extra credit, more than 100%, to zeros. And I don't want to chide anyone, but I do want to say that this was basically a homework problem with the numbers changed. And it gives me a sense of how much effort you've made on homework. So the homework problems, again, are not optional. Not every homework problem is going to appear on the test, but I try when I write my test to have at least some of the tests reflect very directly homework work. Okay, once you got that, let's see if you can integrate. Okay, there's my next step. If I have 3x to the negative 2, that's an exponential, that's a, that is a, a polynomial expression, I raise the power by 1 and then divide by that power, new power that I get. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and then I divide by negative 1 and I got 3 over x. I should have my plus c in there. I want it to go through x equals 1, y equals 3, c is 0. There's the answer to the test problem, y equals three over x. Let's just graph that and see what that streamline looks like. By the way, I should have said that this flow is for x greater than or equal to zero. That's what we did on the test. Okay, so. Got a little bit of a mistake there. Um, I got the, the streamline looks like that, 
but I haven't figured out direction. So to figure out direction, it might be worth figuring out one velocity vector. Let's do that and add that to it, okay? So if let's just go to this point right here, x equals 1, 3, and figure out the velocity vector. So 1 in the x direction, negative 3 in the y direction, the velocity vector is something like that. The velocity vector is something like that. And of course, we could go to other points. If you think about it, if x equals 3, y equals 1. So that it's also going to go through 3, 1. Okay? And we can put that in there. If we put 3 in there, we get 9 for the horizontal component of the velocity vector and negative 3. So we have something that is much longer, but still going down 3. Okay, good. So that is old news. Um, uh, as I've mentioned before, it's been a real pleasure teaching at Sac State and seeing people who struggle early on get things down. If this is uncomfortable for you, go back to Chapter 4 and do as many problems as you can. All right, but then the, there's the question of dilution, and I don't have that up there, but a quick reminder. I want to do du dx, dv dy, and if it were three-dimensional, dw dz, partials, all of them, um, and uh, add those up and see how it turns out. So why don't you go ahead and see if there's dilution. I'll be working on it myself. All right, well, I'm curious what you guys got. I got that there is dilution. So let's just take a look at the work on that. Okay, so for this function, u is equal to x squared. Okay, so du dx, the partial of this u with respect to x is 2x. Okay, v is equal to negative 3, and the partial of v with respect to y is 0. And then to get the dilution rate, I do the gradient, which is the addition of all those partial derivatives. Okay, and I only got two of them because I'm just doing two-dimensional flow and I get gradient v is equal to 2x. Okay, so that would be that would mean that this flow there is spreading out. Since we're doing x is greater than or equal to zero, we can put in, in numbers and see what the dilution rate is, okay? So the gradient of v here at x equals one is two, it's spreading out by a factor of two, and then we get to three, it's spreading out by a factor of six. And that was actually due to the acceleration. This fluid is moving this way and then speeding up and going faster and faster and faster. And so you have particles, if you imagine this little square here like this that represents that fluid, a part of it is moving faster than another part because it's further downstream. And so you get this fluid spreading out as you go along. So this would be a case of a fluid that has dilution. Okay, what about rotation? Is there rotation in that case? Well, we'll start working on that in just a minute. Okay, so we know how to do dilation, but what about rotation? Well, first let's give a stab at doing some rotation. Here's what you need. Um, you need a mechanical engineering reference manual. Not essential. That's going to prop it up. Needs a container for our rotational motion. And we need some viscosity so that we can actually see it. So we're going to give that a try. So I've got some Rayleigh's honey here for you. Um, and let's see if we can get a little viscosity in there. So it's not flowing very well, so that means there must be a lot of resistance to shear. Hopefully not, it's not going to take that much, but we'll give it a quick try. So we've got some honey going in there. Fairly high mu. This honey's not in there, but the viscosity is pretty high. Okay, so that's going to provide some viscosity, and then of course we need some hot water. So we'll try that out, add some hot water. Okay, so I got that in there, and I'll try to mix that up a little bit. Hopefully the honey will disperse a little bit. Okay, and we'll see if we can get some rotational flow. See if we can get that going. Okay, so hopefully you can see that funnel in there from the side, and we've got a rotational flow going. I didn't work all that great. I would probably need more honey to do it. You can try it at home and try to get that honey ratio up. Okay, but you can get a pretty strong vortex going where you have the fluid rotating. And then of course there's the question about whether you're getting dilation or not when that fluid's rotating. You can try that at home and see if you can get that going. So, but what about the math behind it? We'll get going on that in just a second. 
All right, so the question is, we, we knew how to get the dilation given we have the velocity vector, but how are we gonna get the rotation given that we have a velocity vector? So uh, again, this little part right here, I don't think there's any need to copy down, just think about it, trying to give you a little bit of intuition. We're gonna be working in two dimensions, so I'm gonna make the horizontal plane the x-axis and the vertical plane the y-axis. And I want you to think about, okay, what would it happen if we had some from flow? Let's say it's flow to the right, but there was also some rotation. So this is a small fluid element, and let's say it goes over here like this eventually. What would need be necessary for there to be rotation? Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the top right here like this, okay? If it were rotating in the simplest form it rotated 90 degrees, this top would be over here like this, okay? Then correspondingly, this bottom, okay, would be back here like this, okay? And so we have some rotation with the top going here over like this and the bottom going there like that. So I just want you to pause and think for a second. What was going faster if we ended up that way, the top or the bottom? So going from here, the top ended up over here like that, and the bottom ended up lagging behind. Well, hopefully your intuition says that the top was going faster than the bottom. And that actually is correct. So what we're going to say is the U, the U is the motion of this horizontal mo motion of this top element, is faster at the high Y than the low Y. So what we're going to say is that there is actually a DU DY that's necessary for rotation or part of rotation. So that what this, this, this differential right here, du dy, is saying, hey, if this is non-zero, there is a change of u in the y direction. So as we go in the y direction, this, the u of this element here, the horizontal velocity of this element here, is different than the horizontal velocity of that element there. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. And it turns out then that mathematically, this is the bottom line stuff that I encourage you to copy down. You can freeze the video and copy this down, okay? If we're gonna um, figure out whether there's rotation, we're gonna figure out whether there's vorticity. So, hey, my demo with the honey wasn't great. You get the ratio right, it works out really well, but you get vorticity is like rotation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a vector calculus with the velocity vector. Okay, and this is a symbol cross. Hopefully you remember that from calculus. And this symbol is sometimes talked about the curl of V. So when we're doing the curl of V, we're figuring out how much rotation, how much curling is there of that fluid. Okay, so if you think about it, we could have a fluid element over here that rotates about the x-axis. There's rotation about the x-axis. It could rotate about the y-axis. Or finally, there could be rotation relative to the z-axis, where the z-axis is an axis coming over here like that. Okay, And um, that is the only rotation we're going to worry about from now. Probably for homework number seven, I'll ask you to look in the book, to look in the book at the complete vorticity expression. But for us, we're going to figure out du dy, and we're going to figure out dv dx, and the vorticity is the difference between those two. So if the question for you guys is, hey, we've got a flow, we've got a, ve a velocity vector, which tells us something about a flow. Is there rotation? You're going to compute dv dx using calculus. You're going to compute, compute du dy using calculus, and you're going to take the difference. Um, for me, remembering this stuff from way back when, when I was an undergraduate, it was helpful to know that this is the cross product. Hopefully you've seen that term before, and it's kind of kind of like we're doing a cross. Usually you do, oftentimes you do dv dy, dy, but here we're doing dv dx. We're going from v to x across. And du, a lot of times we do du dx, but here we're doing du dy. Okay, that, so there's a summary um, of vorticity. We're going to calculate this thing. If we get zero, that's going to mean that it is irrotational. You might want to write that down. If you do this curl of the velocity vector and get zero, it's irrotational. Okay, finally, interestingly, one thing that we're going to want to figure out is if we got a fluid element that's rotating about the z-axis, okay, so it's rotating about the z-axis, an axis that comes out like this, that would be a fluid element that was going around like that, rotating about the z-axis, okay? We can actually figure out its rotational speed, 
okay, as in like radians per second by doing half of the curl. So here's the curl, and there's half of it. And it, strictly speaking, it would be a re in the k direction if you remember your vector calculus. So it might be worth writing that down. Okay, really good. I'm going to put an example on the board, on the whiteboard. And what I'd like you to do is see if you can work out. Um... All right, so here we're at. Here's our example. We did this earlier. We took a look at this velocity vector, 4i plus 3j. And we said, hey... Is there any dilation? Now we're going to ask, and is there any rotation? So certainly you can just plug and chug. But if possible, it, it's worth actually thinking what this flow looked like. And what we found with this flow, basically, is that says that any point in the xy plane, the fluid is moving over 4 and up 3. And so we just had, ended up having streamlines that were going over 4, over, up 3. And we'd have a bunch of streamlines like that. So if you thought about looking above at a fluid, this is a fluid that's just moving to the right. So what did we decide about dilation? No dilation at all. Those streamlines are parallel. They're not getting tighter together. They're not getting further apart. We just end up having parallel flow, no dilation. Okay, how about rotation? Well, hope, take a guess at it and then go at it. We're going to figure out, our first question is going to be there any dilation, pardon me, any rotation. So we're going to figure out the vorticity. We're going to figure out the curl of the velocity vector. I'll do the work on board real quickly and you guys do it as well. All right, so I'm getting no curl at all, no rotation whatsoever. And here's the math, okay? V is, for this function, V is equal to 3. And so the derivative of that V with respect to X is 0. U is equal to 4. The derivative of U with respect to Y is 0. And so if I do dV dx minus du dy, dV dx minus du dy, I get that the curl of V, sorry about my writing, just a second, is equal to zero. So that means this is irrotational flow. And of course that makes sense. This is just like a river going straight along and there's no rotational flow. Okay, that was easy enough, but let's go ahead and get a real example up there that makes you think a little bit more. So same thing, I'm gonna give you a velocity vector and uh, give you some verbal instructions and see if you can take, take yourself through it. All right. Okay, this would be a good example that uh, to go back through. We went through and worked on this velocity equation quite a bit um, earlier in the semester. All right, so reading it out loud, the velocity vector is y times i hat minus x times j hat. We found that that actually gave streamlines that have the form x squared plus y squared equals c. So one streamline would be x squared plus y squared equals 4. So take a break for a second before you do the question about rotation. Is this fluid rotating? And go ahead and graph the streamline. And then what? in addition, so you're going to graph the streamline. And then in addition, I'd like you to do the velocity vector at two different places, 2, 0, and 0, 2. All right. So we'll take a break, maybe pause the video, see if you can get that graph up there. Okay, first step, if you want to see, that's my streamline. That is basically a circle of radius 2. That means the fluid is somehow following this path. I don't know much about what it's doing beyond the fact that there's some circular type motion. What I would need to do is get to get clear on it is get some velocity vectors. So I'm going to get a velocity vector at 2, 0, and at 0, 2. Okay, so there's the those are the two velocity vectors. I just plug my points into those points there. 
Again, if this is something you're feeling shaky on, go back to the earlier homeworks and practice this until you feel comfortable. There would also be a velocity vector here like this, and there would be a velocity vector there like that. Okay, so hopefully you're guessing whether there, this is rotating whether there is rotation of this fluid or it's irrotational. I think it's obvious, but we want to do the math. And then if you d get that there is rotation, work out the angular speed. So now you're basically, hopefully you have these equations written down, you're plugging and chugging and see if you can work it out. I'm going to do it myself. Okay, so I got there with rotation. Hopefully you did. I'll get the math up there. Okay, so basically I just need to plug and chug. Hopefully at some point in your life you'll have a professor who takes you through the proof of this. It's okay for now just to copy it down and work with it. So I worked out with dv dx and I got negative 1 because v is actually equal to negative x. The u function in this vector is y. So I got du dy equals plus 1 and then I'm just following the, mod, the, the math dv dx is negative 1, minus 1 is negative 2, that's not 0, so there is rotation going on. Okay, once we know that there's rotation, we'd actually like to be able to get the omega, and that is this equation right here. So I'm just going to basically do one half of the velocity vector. So one half of negative, pardon me, of the curl of v, and one half of negative 2 is negative 1. So I'm going to get omega z, and try to write it down yourself so that you can see if you can figure it out. Okay, so basically half of negative 2 is negative 1, so I get that the omega is negative 1 times k hat or negative k hat. So there's a rotation of 1 radium per second, and then what does the negative tell us in this case? Well, the negative it tells us it's clockwise. If it was positive, it would be counterclockwise. If it's negative, it is clockwise. And so basically that you can think of that coming from the right-hand rule. Okay, I have a negative k. K is the axis coming out of the plane or going into the plane. Negative would be away from us, so I take my thumb and do it in the negative direction, and then the curl of my fingers shows the rotation. Okay, so that's the next idea we have. So for any velocity vector, you guys ought to be able to figure out the dilation rate and also figure out whether there's, it's rotational or not. And that's a pretty powerful tool. Seems very abstract but we're building to some, doing some modeling. So if you have some flow out there, which you need to model, like those people at the Air Resources Board, they are modeling plume flows all the time. We can start working our way towards it by working with velocity vectors and thinking about dilation and rotation. Great, so next step, we'll get going on that in just a second. All right, so um, hopefully I have the feel that if you have U and V, you have the velocity vector for a, for a flow, there's a lot of stuff you can figure out about the nature of the flow, like is there rotation or not. But how about you know actually doing this yourself as you, as a working engineer? What would you need to do? Well, um, if you had some flow you wanted to model, so for example, if you had flow over a cylinder, so imagine this is air coming here and then it's going to split with some going over, some going over the top of the cylinder, some going on to the bottom of the of that cylinder. And that happens all the time, particularly in heat exchangers. You have heat exchangers where you have a fluid flowing through there and you want it to say cool off air. So like some 17 degree or 18 degree refrigerant and you have the air coming over here like this and you want to cool it off. Okay, how is that flow going to work over that cylinder? It turns out it's a or pipe. It turns out it's a really practical question. I mean, I know it's going to split with some going over here like this and some going over the bottom, but what actually is the function, the velocity function v at any x or y position? How do you go about working that out? Well, it turns out that there is an intermediate step called figuring out the stream function for a flow. 
and uh, we're going to start working on that. And that'll be the end of the lecture for today is to work that out. So stream function means you got a flow and you're going to actually work with something associated with the flow called the stream function. So this symbol right here is a Greek letter. I don't speak Greek, but it's PSI, Psi, okay, at XY. And there's some function associated for the flow that we can figure out at XY. Later on, we'll do a cylindrical coordinates, R and theta. That's very important. But for today, we'll stick with XY. All right, so let's take a look at an example, okay? What if we had psi at xy, and it turns out, well, let me just give you the numbers, and you might want to just write this down and think about it just a little bit. Okay, there's an actual stream function for some sort of flow. So there's some sort of flow in the xy plane, and the, the stream function is xy. Okay, what would that mean? Well. Let's just go to a point. Let's go to the point 1, 1. Okay, so over there, that's the point 1, 1. And what is psi, actually? So you're going to take 1 here and 1 here and multiply them together, and you get that the, the psi function is equal to 1. Its units are meters squared per second. Is it a scalar or a vector? Well, it's a scalar. Hmm. Let's go over to 2, 2, and put it in there. Is the psi function the same? Well, I'm going to do it, evaluate it at 2, 2, and I get 2 times 2 is 4. I get 4. Um, I get a different number, units meter squared per second. Okay, look, it's pretty abstract, this idea that you have a stream function, and it turns out with a little bit of experience you can figure out stream functions, and then the important thing is that you can use the stream function once you know it to figure something other stuff out. And there's two particular equations that I want you to write down. Um, uh, what we want to be able to do is, given the stream function, we want to be able to figure out the u, the horizontal component of the velocity, and v, the vertical component of the velocity. You may want to go the other way eventually, where you have u and v and you want to figure out the stream function. But for today, we're just going to go forward. So let me just go ahead and write that down, and I encourage you to write these, these equations down. The horizontal component of the um, velocity vector is the partial of the stream function with respect to y. Okay. And then in addition, the vertical component of the velocity vector is the partial of the stream function with respect to x. But I skipped something very important when I was saying that. you got to get the negative in front of there to make the math all work out. Okay, so I'm going to get that up there. I was just saying it out loud, but you might want to pause it. The, pause the video and write this down. This is something that you're really responsible for working with. Okay. So I got this stream function, and I want to figure out the horizontal component of the velocity vector. I do the derivative of the stream function with respect to y, the partial derivative. I want to figure out the vertical component of the velocity vector. I do the derivative of the stream, stream function with respect to x, but I throw that negative in front of it. Another day, we'll go over what we did in polar coordinates. All right, it's that simple, but it takes a little bit of practice. So what we're going to try to do is do an example now that puts it all together. And let me hold up that example. I'll try to be reading it backwards and see um, uh, if you can make as much progress as you can on your own, and I'll be slowly working it on the board. So here it is. Let's say we have that same stream function, x, y, but let's say it only holds for negative x. x is less than or equal to zero. Yes, the way I intended to do. Okay, a, b, c, d, e, f, g may feel impossible, but uh, with a little bit of work, you're going to be very comfortable with this. A, basically you're going to figure out the velocity vector. You have the equations. B, let's figure out the streamline equation through a particular point. And I got the point negative 1, 1. And then let's graph it. So what does this flow look like? There's going to be all sorts of velocity vectors, but let's get one streamline up there. Okay. Um, let's add the velocity vectors to our graph, and I've got two particular points, negative 1 half 2 and negative 2 1 half. Let's figure out the acceleration vector, all right? And then we're going to add those acceleration vectors to our graph as well, okay? Um, so that's part E. And then finally, we're going to think about that flow. Is there any dilation? That was earlier in the lecture. We'll take it take a look at it. And then finally, for a fluid element, any, is there any rotation going on? What's going on with that? So, why don't you go ahead and I'll, I would pause the video and write down these instructions. You're going to treat it like, you know, a homework problem or a quiz and see if you can make as much progress as you can. I'm going to start working through it piece by piece 
and uh, get the answers up there. And then you can just at every step, step along the way to check to see whether you're right. Okay. Okay, so getting going on this example. The first thing is we want to figure out the velocity vector. So taking it through it really quickly, the u is, I'm just going to point it out, is going to be the partial of this expression with respect to y, and that so that should just be x. So we've got a horizontal velocity of x everywhere in the field. Think about what that means a little bit later on. Okay, what about the v? Okay, that is the partial of this function, okay, with respect to x, okay, and that's going to be y, but i got to put a negative in front of that, so that's negative y. Okay. By the way, this had units meters squared per second, so these are going to turn out to be meters per second. So we got that. Okay, what was the what was the final goal in part A was to come up with a velocity vector. So our velocity vector is equal to x times i hat minus y times j hat. Okay, so that's our first part, and um, what would be helpful to do. I'm just going to go ahead and get a graph up there, an xy plane. Okay. What would be helpful to do, and I think this would help some of you who are struggling a little bit with um, what um, pardon me, with what is uh, going on with these equations, would be to go ahead and do some graphing. Okay. Where? Okay. You. I'm sorry. My my vertical axis isn't very good. Give me just a second, please, to try to fix that up a little bit. And I'm sorry, you guys, I should get a new pen, which I will do for the next lecture. But just go ahead and graph some points there and get some different velocity vectors and see what's going on. So, for example, I'm just going to think about it really quickly. I'm just going to do negative 1, 1, which would be that point right there. So if x is negative 1, that's negative. And if y is 1, that's negative. So we would have a velocity vector, which would be left 1 and down 1. So that would be that point. We'd have negative 1, 1. So I could do, I'm just going to get that in there really lightly. Unfortunately, this pin doesn't erase very well, but we have a velocity vector like that. Okay, and then we could go to all sorts of different points. Like I could do 2, 2, and at 2, 2, I'd have over 2, I'd have down 2. I'd have another velocity vector like that. And I could just, you know, spend, I could take a, an hour or so and draw a bunch of velocity vectors. And if I'm careful and thought about it, eventually the flow pattern will emerge. So there's, there's some sort of flow pattern in this field. Okay. I got that erased. That's part A. Okay, part B is to figure out the streamline. So I'm going to get at that really quickly, and hopefully um, you can do that on your own now too. And again, if you're just feeling stuck, just like on homework, I really encourage you to look through your notes, look through your equation sheet, etc., and see if you can find that. I know you have your equation sheets from test one. We'll try to figure out something about that. But you can start building a new equation sheet, and every time you write something down, it's more likely you remember it. So dy dx okay so there's my first step in working out the stream uh, in working out the stream function that is just plug and chug that's taking the basic definition I'm looking at this and saying hey do I know how to integrate this honestly I don't off the top of my head but I can separate the variables I can take this y and move it over the left side, and I can take this x and move it over to the right side. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I got dy over y equals negative dx over x. And hey, you can integrate that pretty easily. Integrate both sides. I'm going to do it myself real quickly. Okay, so hey, there's a pretty good equation. Um, since we were asked to graph the streamline, if there's any way we could get y by itself, that's going to make life prob probably going to make life easier. And of course, you can do this. That you can think of this this as being this left side as being e to the ln right y, and this right side is e to the ln x plus c. And of, of course, you can break that down. I'm going to write that step. Remind you of some basic some basic log stuff.
Okay, so there's your next line. Okay, I basically am thinking of making both of these, the left side and the right side, is exponents of the term e. There are many different ways to do it. If you want to do it a different way, no problem. But you can see this left side is y. This term right here is negative x, and that term there is going to end up being a constant. Okay, but actually I made, made a, a mistake there. This is going to be... 1 over e to the ln x, so 1 over x. So let me write that rod line down there for you guys. Okay, so we got it. So e to the negative ln x is the same as 1 over x. e to the c is basically a constant, so basically I have y is equal to 1 over x times c, or y equals c over x. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna write that over here and try to finish that off. Okay, there is, the, there is a general equation of my streamline. So there's some sort of fluid moving over here, and for every c we get a different line showing what the fluid is doing at some different point. But we're asked to just do one streamline, and that is the line where x is equal to negative one and y is equal to one. And if you go through and, value, and evaluate that, if x is equal to negative 1 and y equals 1, this c needs to be equal to negative 1. So our equation of our streamline is y is equal to negative 1 over x. y is equal to negative 1 over x. Okay, so uh, that's a good example for you to practice. You can run through this again yourself and see if you can get it all yourself. I'm going to erase and put that summary up there so we have that in front of us. Okay, so back to the graph, all right? You can take your time and graph that, but if you remember earlier in the problem statement, we only needed to graph for x is less than or equal to zero. Um, let's, take, let's do a really, really easy point. Let's put zero in there. Well, we get undefined, and hopefully you remember what that would actually mean. Let's put one in there. Y equals, if I put one in there, I get y is equal to, negative one, pardon me. If I put negative one in there, I get y equals one. So at negative one, I've got y is equal to one, okay? How about negative 2? Put negative 2 there, I get y equals 1 half. Negative 3, I get y equals 1 third. And it's probably worth putting 1 half in there, negative 1 half. I'm going to get y equals 2. Okay, And you could do several points, and then you're basically getting that hyperbolic-like shape. And I didn't draw that very carefully, but you get that hyperbolic-like shape like that. Okay, and a mistake on my part. I put the arrows on there. I don't know what the wet direction is, the flow is going yet. Kind of have an int so I should I should pause before I do. Okay, velocity vectors. Okay, again, my drawing is not really all that great. So the next thing to do is to get some velocity vectors and acceleration vectors. So if you would let if you would hang on for a second while I just try to make that graph a little bit bigger, because otherwise it's just gonna be a mess. Okay, and I'm gonna make my axes red. I'm sorry, I know it's hard to read. If I press a little harder, we'll be able to see it. Get a little bit bigger graph and see if we can get the velocity vectors in there. Okay, and I'm just getting that graph up there really quickly. Okay, so again, somehow flow is going like this. Somehow flow is going like that. And there might be other flows here like this. If we had time, we could graph them all. Okay, how about the velocity vector? And some of our points that we wanted to do was we wanted to do the velocity vector at x is equal to negative one half, y equals two. Okay, and we can put that in there. So this would be negative one half i hat. So that means that there's a horizontal velocity of negative one half, okay? and then a vertical velocity of negative two. So we're over one half, we're down two. Of course, we know it's tangent, so we might want to draw it like that so it's tangent. Okay, let's do this other point right here like this. That is x equals two, so it's going over to the right two. 
y is one half, so it's going down one half, and of course it's equal to its tangent. So those are the velocity vectors. Next thing is to do acceleration. So working out the acceleration, um, that was worth not very much not very much credit on test one, but you know with a little bit of practice you're going to be really good at that, and we'll get some more practice. So let's work out the acceleration vector. Okay, so the acceleration vector, hopefully you can remember what that equation is. I'll get that up there uh, really quickly. Okay, for steady two-dimensional flow, that's the acceleration vector. Of course, it's a bit more complicated if you have unsteady flow or three-dimensional flow or we're in polar coordinates, but in this case we're 2D flow and we're steady state. So hey, it's just plug and chug, and maybe we can even do it by just looking at the whiteboard and taking a look at what the equations are. So the u is equal to x, okay? dv dx, take the derivative of this thing over here with respect to x, and we have i hat. So taking a look at it, I am getting, as a, for the first term, I'm getting x times i hat. Okay, try to do the rest on your own. All right, hopefully you paused and you got it. Hopefully you paused and you got it and you get got y times j hat. Let me try that myself and make verify that's right. V, okay, is equal to, oh, actually I misspoke, right? Because V is equal to negative y, so this would be minus y. Okay, and how about dv dx? Pardon me, how about dv dy? That would be negative j hat. So it would be negative y times negative j hat, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So there is my acceleration vector right there, x i hat plus y j hat. Okay, let's see if we can make sense of it and put it in there. Remember, if something's kind of curving like this, then there should be an acceleration towards the center. So let's take a look and see if that will work out, actually. All right, and so we're going to do those two points we did. Okay. Uh, this first point up here was negative half, okay? That per point, the x value was negative a half. So we have negative one half times i hat, and then the y value is two times j hat. So we basically are going negative one half and up two, so we have an acceleration up like that. And that's not very well drawn, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay, how about this point right here? Okay, that's x equals 2, so we have an acceleration to the right of 2, and then y is 1 half, so we have an acceleration up 1 half. So it would be over 2, up 1 half, and so we have an acceleration that's more horizontal. Okay, so, sorry about the pen again, I'll try to get a better pen for you next time. But basically, um, I can add some more arrows for stream flow direction and streamline. Okay. This fluid's moving down here like that and ends up going to the right. Ends up going to the right. Okay? And it ends up, if you think about it, there's an acceleration this way at first, and it has two components. This component right here is slowing it down vertically, and this component right here is pushing it in the negative y direction. Okay? Um, over here, it's still being slowed down vertically, but it's definitely being pushed in the y direction, and you get some and you end up getting a push here like that. All right. So there's quite a bit of stuff there, and we're not done yet, but just to think about what we did, we started with a stream function equal to x, y. Eventually, at the end of chapter 6, you're going to be able to say, oh, given a certain flow, I mean, given I have a cylinder here of radius half inch, and I have a flow going across it at 20 meters per second, I know what the stream function is going to be. Eventually, we want to get to that point. And then once we have the stream function, we can do some analysis to understand better what's going on. You know, we were interested in things like pressure, acceleration, velocity, etc. And so we got some velocities, we got some accelerations, and we graphed it. But it's helpful to understand also, is there any dilation? So let's, those are the last two questions. Is there any dilation? So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and work out the dilation. Okay, 
I'm hoping that you're writing down the equation for dilation, okay? And I'm hoping you're getting no. So give yourself another quick check on that and I'll get my answers up there. Okay, so we check out by dilation by doing the gradient of the velocity vector, okay? Do the gradient of velocity vector. For our purposes in ME120, it's going to be this calculation right here. So hopefully we can just check it out by going and taking a look at what um, the derivatives are. So du dx is equal to 1. dv dy is equal to negative 1, and we're going to add those, okay? And I get 0. All right, so we have no dilation going on. So what that would mean, okay, um, just bear with me for just a second, okay, if I start with a little stream element up here like this, okay, so that's a little box right there like that. When it gets over here like this, it has not changed in size, essentially. It has not had changed in size, so there's no dilation. What about, is there any rotation, okay? So let's, why don't you go ahead and work that out and see if you can do it yourself. Okay, I'm getting that the curl is zero, so there's no rotation. So maybe check your work, and let's give it a try and see what it turns out. Okay, so if we wanted to figure out the vorticity or the rotation, we would do the curl of the velocity vector. And for our purposes, two-dimensional, steady-state flow, it's equal to this thing. And so it's kind of like a cross. A lot of times we do V with Y, in this case we do V with X. A lot of times we do U with X, in this case we do U with Y. And it goes in this order so that we get the rotation right. All right, so going back up there, dV dx, the derivative of this with respect to X is zero. Um, du dy, the derivative of that with respect to X, zero, uh, Y is zero, and so I get zero rotation. So what that means is this little element is moving down here like this and the bottom stays the bottom. So when it comes over here, it's the same like that. The bottom stays the bottom and the top stays the top. So it's just a little bop of fluid that's going there like that with no rotation. Okay, look, I know it's not crystal clear. I think some practice is in order. So what I encourage you to do um, is make sure you have these equations written down. You know, try to get away from you know, looking at solutions or um, et cetera. And I'm going to, I'm working on homework number seven. Hopefully I'll have it posted relatively soon. If regardless, I'll send you an email when that's up. And homework number seven is going to, as always, with most homeworks, it's going to include some review problems. It includes chapter five, number 84, the dishwasher problem. That's a challenge. Um, don't back off from it. A hint. Working in it, in it, in on it in Excel can be very helpful because there's eight holes, there's eight different flows, and you can set up a spreadsheet to do it. And then it's going to include some Chapter Six stuff. So get going on the Chapter Six stuff. Um, try to work out the velocity vector, do the dilation, do the rotation, and then if I'll give you a couple stream functions and ask you to figure out stuff from there. As always, please answer, ask me any questions. Um, I'll try to keep you posted more on what's going on. I'll be emailing you a bit over spring break, and that's not to insist that you work over spring break, but to give you the option if you want to catch up slash work ahead. All right, you guys, take care. Be well.